Hey guys, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to the video series on the Precision Matthews TL1640. This video, we're going to do two things. First, install the DRO. Uh, it's a DRO Pro EL400. Uh, the second section of the video is going to be getting it all leveled. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. Now that the lathe is all cleaned up, I had to do one thing. As you could see, my, my hardinge, my shop is in disarray and the hardinge has moved back. Um, and I left room so I could get behind here, wire the motor, and install the DRO uh, Z-scale. So I did that now, kind of before I went full forward with the, with the DRO. And I just wanted to show you what I did. It's very, very simple. The nice thing about this lathe is that the casting the angled part of the casting here is here, but there's this flat area that's very square to here. It's very square. So it was really just a matter of drilling, um, you know, two quarter inch 20 holes and bolting this thing straight down. I didn't even need the jack screws. This was so square. Uh, <clears throat> did the same thing here. They're a little bit buried under. This was a little tricky, but we, um, we uh, drilled the two holes, mounted this. This was a little thinner, so I had to use the four uh, standoff um, grub screws. This is a retainer, so this can't be like pulled. And if you'll notice, there's two holes there and two holes there. And my DRO kit had a nice convenient little clamping system here, which held the head. And uh, over there, same deal. We put the two uh, quarter 20s, didn't need the grub screws. And what I did was, I used a square and I measured from the top, or, or the bottom, um, actually. I measured from the top of the way, <laughs> it's actually the bottom of the way, but in this case, at the top, I measured from there you know, when this carriage was slid down, but I measured from the top there down to, uh, to here with a square and lined it up perfect. We did a, a test run. I, I got the reed head dialed in perfect. It doesn't rub, it's, it's um, adjusted and tuned perfectly. So I'm going to, I'm gonna connect the coolant line now and then grab the hood that's sitting over there and put it all back together. And then, uh, I guess then I'll work on this guy right here. I have two equal gauge blocks placed now at the bottom of the slide. What this is going to do is it's going to lift the scale up just a little bit, just to allow a little bit of clearance so it doesn't rub, and uh, and keep it you know equally spaced and square. Now that I have both scales mounted to the machine, the next thing to do is to mount the reed head for the x-axis. So as you can see here, I'm holding it in between the apron, and I'm moving it around and trying to design in my head a bracket to hold it. So I break out the gauge blocks and I clamp the scale and I start taking measurements because the reed head needs to be positioned correctly against the scale. So once I've done that then I had to find a piece of scrap metal and we found one in the bucket and there's my crude layout with a sharpie. I load the piece up into the bandsaw and get it all cut up and ready to be milled. So now, moving over to the mill, I start drilling all my various holes. As we can see that they're done here. Put some screws in there to show you what it looks like. Flip it over, take a look at the bottom side. Okay, so I have the holes drilled and tapped now. And using a, a carbide burr, I kind of scratched off the paint. So the grub screws, the adjustment grub screws, will have a nice solid 
uh, bearing down on the apron rather than digging into the soft paint. Now I have the reed head rough placed. We just got the screws loose, just getting it in place, getting it all ready to be positioned. The part slotted so we can move the reed head up and down. And these four jack screws will allow me to adjust it the tilt and this way. So we'll get the head dialed right in perfectly. Mounting the DRO head was really simple. I found a scrap piece of aluminum, drilled some holes, transferred those holes to the back portion of the lathe, uh, drilled those holes through, and bolted the bracket right to the back of the lathe. The DRO head gets mounted to an adjustable arm. The way I mounted the arm to the bracket was I drilled a hole in the top and put a slot at the bottom. This allows me to adjust the DRO head and pivot it to make it square. DRO all mounted. Everything all put back together. Clean. We even mounted the DRO head. Moves in and out. Nicely. It's kept off of here. When the riggers delivered the machine, we kind of roughed it out. We set the jack screws to the, you know, we, we lifted the jack screws up on that side. We pushed them down on this side to compensate for the big dip that I have on my floor here because it's pretty significant. Um, on the lower end, because the jack screws are only a certain length, I put uh, some cutoffs, some drops that I have of polycarbonate. So I have two. Uh, all the way in the furthest one. I have one over here. It's really to take up a lot of the slack. I did a tinsel strength lookup on the polycarbonate and you know pounds per square inch is somewhere around 7,000 pounds. The whole machine in total is 35, 3,600 pounds. Um, so you know one sixth of that I think we're going to be okay. Um, it's heavy enough. It's got it locked down and you know, the machine isn't going to slip off or anything like that. Um, so we got it roughed in right now in place and the whole idea with the machine is I want to have it tilted slightly um, actually you know if you could see over here I want to have the machine level this way but I do want to have it pitched down this way to send all cutting oil and coolant or whichever I choose to the reservoir collection area over here I have some parallels laid out on the flats of the ways and I'm using the Starrett 98 um, machinery level. I believe, and, and don't quote me on this, but I believe each uh, witness mark, each increment is three thousandths. Um, again, not sure, but we know it's, it's real precise. So I have a set over here, and over here I have some one, two, three blocks uh, set up for this side, for the headstock side. So again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the level to be, you know, pretty much level this way. If my reservoir was on one side, I would favor it to have it pitched down a little bit. Uh, but the reservoir, which I'll show you in a second, is right at, you know, in between the chip pan. It's all the way on that side, the tailstock end, but it's right in the middle. So I definitely want to keep the lathe level that way. And like I said, we're going to have it pitched down just you know, a couple of thousands, just so everything will, will uh, you know, run to the reservoir. So with our, with our rough placement, you could see that the, uh, the operator side is, is a little bit high, right? Because the bubble is over here. So let's go check the tailstock end and we'll see what we got on that side. And over here on the tailstock end, it looks like we cut a little bit more of the same here. So again, this was, this was just really roughed in. And um, so the idea now is I wanna, I wanna get this as close as possible um, level, obviously in the middle on both ends, and then we'll work on the pitch, you know, the, uh, the horizontal pitch, if you will. All right, so if this end is high, we need to drop it down a little bit. So I'm gonna do everything in quarter uh, turn increments. So there's our quarter turn. Let's see what it did. 
All right, so what, what happened was is the front jack screw, I kind of ran out of a little bit of travel. So I'm gonna go on the back rear screw and jack that one up, which will sink the front end. So this is gonna be a lot of back and forth uh, balancing of the screws. Um, I'll rough it in and I'll get it, I'll basically get it so the bubble is in the center here and then we'll work on pitching it down towards the tailstock. Now just to show you how sensitive this level is, we're, we're almost in the middle here, right? We have, I don't know, for the better, the better part of it, a, a half of a witness mark. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna go down over here to this jack screw and I'm gonna turn it just a little bit and you can watch just how much this will move. Right, so I'm gonna turn it, let's say like an eighth of a turn. And I really wanna, I wanna jack, the, I wanna jack this side up, right? So watch the bubble move towards the right. And this is, that's an eighth of a turn. So there you could see it went past. So now I'll back down off of that a little bit. Maybe a sixteenth of a turn. And you gotta, the other thing you have to do as well is you have to wait I don't know, 10, 15 seconds for this thing to kind of settle. It moves very, very slow, the bubble. So that looks to me pretty perfect. We're gonna go over to the headstock side now and level that one. As you can see down over here, that's the, uh, the coolant return. So it's, it's definitely centered right in the middle uh, of the chip pan and yeah, the chip pan returns. Um, so, you know, the coolant is all going to uh, travel right down that way because of the tilt. Now the way I have the camera positioned, it's, it's a little bit hard to see, especially with the, with the glare. There we go. But if I peek over here, um, it looks like the rear, the rear side is high because the bubble is just creeping past that. So we'll jack the front left screw up just a little bit. Again, maybe a sixteenth of a turn. <clears throat> and we'll see how she behaves. Okay. We'll do another one. Wow. <laughs> that was about a quarter of a it was about a quarter of a turn and I moved it pretty quick. So let's back that down again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down a bit and it's probably moving there, and then I'm gonna bring it back in. I don't wanna keep any kind of loose tension on it. Yeah, it went back there. So now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna creep up to keep the tension tight. So there, I went about a sixteenth of a turn. Give it a little bit. All right, I think it's ready to move now. There's another sixteenth of a turn. And it's creeping. I think one more. That looks good, maybe just a hair more. All right, that looks actually really good. All right, I have the, I have the, uh, the camera just tilted, it's leaning. I'm trying to steady the camera there, but you could see how perfect that is. Now again, if my memory serves me correctly, each witness mark is three thousandths of an inch. So this is, this is pretty level right now. The, the headstock side is about, let's see, let me go back again and look. Oh yeah, we're, we're one witness, we are one witness mark favoring that side high, which means all my coolant is gonna go that way. It's almost, this left side is almost touching the bubble. It looks a lot, I'm looking through the camera now and it looks a lot more, but it's almost right at the edge there. Um, I think I'm gonna call that good for now. All right, everything is now leveled. Now the, the, the second part of all of this leveling is gonna to be to do the test cuts. And we're gonna set up a big piece of metal. We're gonna do the barbell method, right? Where you, you cut one collar, then you move and you cut another collar. And this is all gonna be held without the tailstock because we don't want the tailstock to influence you know, the angle of the piece. Um, so this is really gonna tell us if we're cutting the tape or anything. So that's gonna be the second part of the whole leveling process is the actual machining, the testing of the machining. All right, until I do the machining, I just wanna keep these locked so nothing moves. We'll readjust these when I do the machining por portion of the, uh, of the leveling, but we're just snugging them, that's all. All 
All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, DRO is working fantastic. The machine's all leveled. Got more videos coming up. We're going to be uh, we're going to be mixing up some coolant. We're going to be breaking in the spindle. All that and more coming up soon. So until the next video, thank you for watching.